So this woman pulls up to a Starbucks drive-thru and she starts trauma dumping on the barista. Today is um, National Day of Remembrance for suicide victims and my husband was brutally killed. And then she starts crying, making the whole thing uncomfortable to watch. <laughs> Then she turns the camera around on the poor barista. You say hi to people. And people post like them with their family or like grandma, or whatever. My grandma, she's gone. I don't know what made you feel like you needed to comment that. Because hairstylists are experiencing major hits to their mental health when people trauma dump on them. But according to a survey of this year, hairstylists spent an average of 2000 hours per year listening to their clients. 65% have experienced anxiety, burnout, or depression during their professional career. You're that friend that everybody goes to for trauma Dumping. Ask yourself this, are you a convenience store? I get free things. Um, I got cheated on and then my car got totaled, so I'm not doing too good. I could just use a friend. Will you be my friend? For some strange reason, people can't stop oversharing or trauma dumping on the internet. I get it, people want to normalize talking about mental health, but doing so through TikTok dances and filming you trauma dumping on innocent minimum wage food workers and also labeling absolutely everything as a trauma response is slowly desensitizing us to what actual real mental illness looks like. I love my mental illness. Me too. My mental illness literally makes me me. <laughs> Let's get into it. Hello everybody, it is me Salem and welcome back to my Chanel. How are you guys doing? I literally have not been able to sleep properly because I keep waking up at 4 a.m. having to pee. I don't even drink water before bed, so I don't know what's going on with me. I know, TMI, oversharing, but this is the internet, okay? You can overshare about anything, literally anything. When my friend Neil bent over, this happened. Does somebody know, is this COVID related? And if it is, what do we do about it? You could be watching the most wholesome video on the internet to ever exist. It could be of like, you know, a family playing with their dog. And then someone just got to be in the comments like, wow, what a cute dog. I wish my father loved me. It's 7 a.m. It's seven in the morning. It is way too early for you to be telling people your personal business like that. So willy nilly, okay? I feel like privacy doesn't really exist nowadays. Cause why am I figuring out through my TikTok, user 198- apostrophe is getting a divorce and he's taking the kids. Ma'am, I'm just trying to scroll on TikTok while I'm using the bathroom. You know what I mean? Do you think every liberal, liberal Democrat should take home a migrant to show their support? Oh my for God, Jojo! Oh, jo 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 Things that should be private or should be dealt with a therapist. I am processing the most triggering breakup I've had in nine years. Is now kind of seeping into the cracks of real life. Trauma in itself is not a bad thing to have and sharing your experiences online isn't a bad thing either. It doesn't make you a bad person, but it is really weird to film intimate moments or moments of mental breakdowns or stories of great trauma and to just post it online as if there's no weight to it when there is a lot of weight to it even innocent videos that have nothing to do with people trying to educate people on mental health issues or filming their experiences will also have toxic comments and interactions with them someone having fun with their dad everyone's all of a sudden commenting hashtag daddy issues um, my Google Pixel almost got me copyrighted, so that was fun. It's really strange how fast some people on the internet can make a beautiful moment, completely make it about themselves and their traumas. Extreme pessimism has grown a lot within the past few years on the internet. It's almost as if people are now gatekeeping as to how mentally ill someone can be. That's not a real anxiety. I have real anxiety. Um, no, this is not a competition. And even though the newer generations have been trying so hard to normalize mental health talk, I fear that we are actually going Going backwards. Part one, oversharing culture slash trauma dumping culture. What it is and why does it seem like everyone is so miserable, negative, and more traumatized than ever recently? There is a specific sub genre of oversharing on the internet. Another way of oversharing on the internet is when people overshare photos of their kid's first birthday, their kid's first traumatic moment, and then they monetize it on YouTube. <laughs> Family channels. Oh, sorry guys, I had something in my throat. So weird. But another 
the genre of oversharing is a fairly new one that has come up in recent years as the world has gotten more dark and dim and serious. It's trauma dumping. Trauma dumping is defined as an unloading traumatic experiences on others without a warning or invitation. It has gotten so popular for people to trauma dump on strangers on TikTok to the point where there is now a whole subsection called trauma talk on TikTok. In 2021, the hashtag trauma tag on TikTok had 9.2 billion views. Similar to hashtag trauma dump, which has 62.3 million and trauma dumping, which sits at 19.2 million. But because it's so quick, especially on a platform like TikTok, where you can run into a happy video within one second and then be bombarded by the bikini bottom fish telling you about how there's breaking news. Tyson food says it is recalling around 30,000 pounds of dino chicken nuggets after metal pieces were found in the products. And then in the next Next second, user 2988 is talking about their divorce and how the ex-husband burned down their house. And it gives everyone major emotional whiplash. The problem with trauma dumping is that it is always mostly unconsensual, especially on an app like TikTok where things are so fastly generated one after the next after the next within seconds that it's just something that you always run into unconsensually. Cause stories like that go viral all the time. Oversharing has always been a thing since the dawn of time on the internet, but it had a huge spike during the Panini. Around this time, this is where trauma talk and trauma dumping and oversharing culture hit its peak. Everyone rushed online because we couldn't talk to people in real life. And at first, it was a really huge bonding experience for a lot of people on the internet to let each other know that they're not alone in the time that was really, really stressful and scary. I genuinely think that this is the birthplace of trauma dumping culture. The internet kind of stuck with the narrative after the panini. And many people just got stuck with the mindset that it's okay to overshare and trauma dump in general about their own experiences rather than a collectivist experience like the panini. Which again, isn't necessarily a bad thing, but unlike the collectivist trauma bonding that we all had during the panini, having so many separate experiences with people's own personal trauma stories and trauma dumping, despite with the best intentions, is a breeding ground for influencers who lie, people who diagnose other people through comment sections, and trivializing actual trauma by stating every thing that you do is a trauma response. And because of this culture becoming so huge in recent years and it not stopping even after the panini, it has almost made this cult of trauma emerge. I am so over the cult of trauma. The cult of trauma is other mental health professionals and mental health enthusiasts on social media who assign everything to a trauma response. The allure in labeling everything as a trauma response is that you don't actually have to think, was it something else? Is it possible that it actually just has to do with your temperament? Is it possible that it has to do with biology or a chemical imbalance? Is it something that has to do with the fact that, hey, man, life is hard, relationships are unfair, and people can be cruel. That does not mean that every time you encounter hardship, you are traumatized. I am someone who suffered with anxiety for the longest time and still kind of do. But the way I show my anxiety and the way I feel my anxiety and what triggers my anxiety is going to be completely different from another person who has anxiety as well. There is a huge difference between being someone who is nervous and someone who has anxiety. There is a difference between someone who is experiencing temporary sadness versus depression. The problem with social media is is that it keeps blurring the lines between the two which can really confuse people which can also leave people being like um okay so do i get help or not being sad and angry and resentful and all of that is actually very normal and part of the human experience and it doesn't mean that you're broken it just means that you need more time to process everything more time to heal and you need to go about things with patience and unconditional love for yourself if you are someone that struggles with finding out whether you are experiencing temporary negative emotions or if you need to get serious help, there are medical approved assessments and online quizzes, government approved information and pages, websites, and free community services you can go to get a real answer. But with trauma dumping culture on TikTok and oversharing and everything being a trauma response on TikTok, TikTok in general is not a good place to go to to get your answer. Especially because right now everyone seems to be suffering from the same cognitive bias which is called Mean World Syndrome. Part 2. In a privileged first world country, the scariest place to be in is your phone. Bad things are happening all around the world, but stop making it about you. 
Mean world syndrome is a proposed cognitive bias wherein many people may perceive the world to be more dangerous, evil, lonesome, and dark than it actually is. But this is due to long-term moderate to very heavy exposure to violence related content. The more that we watch content about the world falling apart, we become paranoid and distrustful of other people. Now, I'm not gonna be ignorant and be up here and tell you that the world is full of care bears and rainbows although you know what it should be and the only two laws of the land would be to have tea parties and take naps like how perfect would that be i'm gonna be honest even right now currently in the world there is a lot of horrible stuff happening to people every single day so i don't really blame people for giving into mean world syndrome however it starts to get into a bad territory when that's all you consume. If all you consume every hour of the day is media about what's going on, how terrible the world is, how you should be scared of this, how this is gonna potentially happen, you will become so miserable and truly believe that bad things that are happening somewhere else will happen to you. The person who is suffering from mean world syndrome is completely convinced that there's nothing that they could possibly do to help the world because it's so scary. On the opposite end, there's the person who becomes the internet online martyr who believes doing the absolute bare minimum online will have any sort of real world effect, which it doesn't. What's most ironic is that both parties have the same intention and feel the same way, except both approaches cause the most unproductive outcome I have ever seen in my life. This is because both parties are not arguing for the actual cause. They're literally arguing about how the other one is incorrect in their approach to said event. Right now on social media, there is a huge, huge theme of making things about them. The amount of times that I have seen very important societal discussions, important movements be turned into a TikTok dance or a TikTok challenge is crazy. And it low-key mocks the entire movement and purpose of a lot of these discussions online. In the first part of this video, I talked about how every Everyone has become a lot more comfortable on the internet just sharing their business to absolutely everyone. I believe the normalization of oversharing has also caused this new subculture of people who pressure others to also overshare, trauma dump, and also speak on topics that they don't want to speak on. It leads to this culture of seeing who could be more miserable than who in order to prove online that you care more than the other person about said social movement or world event. Ironically, oversharing and trauma dumping culture has led us to become a lot more unempathetic and unsympathetic for people who are going through it and choose to opt out of consuming, participating, or speaking on events that negatively affect their mental health. We are all about mental health until someone's like, hey, you know what? This is affecting me mentally. I kind of don't want to be a part of this. Then we get mad at them for setting that boundary for themselves. And this is why so many people decide to purposely go about their life journeys completely on their own or avoid talking about their mental health with others because of the heavy stigma there still is nowadays. In fact, there's new stigma. And here is the biggest thing. More than ever, we are connected online. That is why we have oversharing and trauma dumping culture and the culture of pressuring one another to speak out on important things that are important to other people online. However, as soon as you log off, we're really lonely. Like, really lonely. Part three, millennials and Gen Zers are going through a friend drought and the only one who's willing to listen is social media and strangers online, but it's not as fulfilling. Now, a lot of people in the older generation consider millennials and Gen Zers as narcissistic snowflakes who are entitled and that we're sensitive over everything. Whereas boomers call it being too sensitive, I would call it actually being too individualistic. I don't think that we're too sensitive, but I do think that we heavily rely on going about our emotional problems on our own. But the thing about individualistic culture is that it does come with downfalls. And the main downfalls you see with individualistic culture is the stuff that Gen Z and millennials are suffering with the most. We are, after all, the loneliest generation out there. There is a friendship drought problem. Young people age 16 to 
to 24 feel more lonely than any other age group right now. 73% of Gen Z reported feeling alone sometimes or even always. In fact, I see it all the time. People on TikTok and Instagram, close acquaintances that I know, talking about how lonely it is now in the world and how difficult it is to have meaningful, real supportive friendships. Two months ago, one of my favorite YouTubers, Dustin Vong, made a video essay called The Friendship Recession. In this video, Dustin talks about the hurdles that come with having friends, such as it costing money to hang out and how social media can put an unrealistic expectation on how we view friendship. But he also talks about how it's okay to have low maintenance friendships and how, in a way, having completely platonic friendships can be a lot more intimate than dating and how it can actually be a lot more fulfilling than dating, which is actually true. Your social circle and your friend group will be the first people to support you or let you know if someone is not a good match for you when it comes to relationships. They'll also be there if the relationship fails or if it needs help. Even when you're not in a relationship, friendships and having a close-knit social circle can help you in so many other ways. It can give you practical and emotional support, provide social connections, job connections, and scientifically, it can increase your sense of belonging and purpose, boosting your happiness and reducing your stress levels. But Gen Z is not receiving these benefits because they're so lonely. Ever since the panini happened, we kinda took a big hit socially in all of our lives and it seems like none of us have really recovered. Humans were not meant to be so isolated and individualistic. We come from a hunting and gathering, community-driven history. We always needed each other for resources, for information, for survival tactics, for trade, literally everything. But nowadays, we have Uber Eats, we have Instacart, we got Netflix, we got our phones, we stay home, and that's that. But we don't understand that everything being so quick and convenient is actually making us more miserable because now that we have these services that are so common and fast it gives us less of an excuse to go out and experience the real world and it keeps us isolated the lack of community so many people have nowadays is actually shocking but it isn't really our fault in fact it's because we lost something called the third place the third place in sociology refers to a social surrounding that separates from the two usual societal environments of home and the workplace. Examples of third places include public libraries, parks, stoops, community centers, clubs, cafes, and churches. People go to cafes all the time, but it's only to get their coffee and leave. Parks are... Eh, no kid really plays anymore. They're all just busy watching Coco Melon on their iPad. Gyms have become unbearable because everyone is always filming each other. The lack of effort put into third places and restoring them is what causes people to become so miserable. The lack of community, the lack of that third resource to get away from your work and to also get away from your home so that that third place can almost be a sanctuary that doesn't exist anymore. Well, the problem is these third places still exist. It's just that no one builds community in those places anymore. Instead, the way a lot of our lives are structured is our home life comes first, our work life comes second, and then our third place is our phones. Isolating them even further. This is not how we were designed to live and be. Humans by nature are social. That's how we survive. And you might think, well, we're not surviving right now, so what's the point? I mean, everyone is trauma dumping all the time on TikTok. The world is kind of crappy and bad stuff are happening all the time so emotionally the majority of humans i've met and the majority of people i've seen online are living in survival mode in their mind you really have to put in the effort to find a third place and to find community and it's really hard and i understand that guys i understand why it's so hard it's hard because a lot of people kind of aren't worth befriending nowadays a lot of people aren't consistent with friendships a lot of people have convinced themselves that they are not a people person even though i'm telling you now as someone who thought that they were a introverted people hating person that could not be further from the truth and you might might think just because you're not an extrovert that isolating yourself further is what makes you happy but in reality it's not that you're actually happy it's just that you're comfortable and it's not that you're an introvert it's just that you are more in tuned to deeper meaningful relationships rather than surface level high by relationships and if that's the case this still pertains to you you still need a third place and you still need community i was once a person who was so convinced that i could do life alone i was so convinced that i hated 
hated people and that they just got in my way and that all they did was just disappoint me. I mean... Low-key, I wasn't wrong, but that's not the point. I was just convinced for the longest time that I was someone that, you know, bad things happen to me and that's just how my life is, I guess. I just thought for the longest time I was cursed. And once upon a time, and I'm sure if you guys have been watching me for a really long time, you guys know and have seen it, that I used to be that type of person who would overshare and trauma dump and was just so negative and the result was me becoming super isolated. I have completely transformed and my life has completely transformed for the better that I look back at my old videos and I don't recognize who I'm looking at. I think that version of me died a long time ago and I'm happy about that. Having connections and having people to talk to has helped me a lot. Finding free resources, even mental health resources through community and through seeking out these third places have helped me so much. Now every Thursday night, I have a couples group that I go to. We learn more about each other. We've exchanged numbers. And at first I didn't enjoy it because it was so surface level. So the introvert in me just didn't want to go. But the truth is it takes time to get to know people. And the thing about putting in the effort of finding community in third places and having somewhere to go at least once a week is that you can take time to get to know people and then it can become an introvert's dream come true where you are surrounded by people who genuinely care about you and that you know deeply and they deeply know you and choose to love you unconditionally. It's something that's so special. Living is emotionally exhausting, I get it. And the last thing that you wanna do is be in charge of other people's problems and interact with people and everything. But what you don't understand is that that is literally self-sabotage. You continuously convincing yourself that you don't need people is slowly poisoning your humanity. Next time you overshare or trauma dump, think about the reason why you're doing it. Is it to educate other people? Is it to reach out to a community online? Is it because you just want to get that feeling out as fast as possible? Or is it something deeper where you're craving community and a support system? If that's the case, then it might be time to temporarily stop putting your effort into social media, social media posts, and social media groups. And instead, bravely come out of your comfort zone and find a third place and community in the real world. And despite what mean world syndrome tries to convince you of, or the reality of how cruel the world can be, don't let it deter you from finding the safe places from finding the sanctuaries and the help that is available around you and definitely don't let it scare you into not believing that you don't have power and that you can't help others because you can and you do have power and don't let social media make you feel like your efforts aren't good enough everyone shows their effort in different ways some people donate some people volunteer some people spread awareness on social media some people meditate and pray whatever you're doing to contribute to the greater good it's good enough. And trust me, your people are not gonna be the people who make you feel like you're not mentally ill enough to join the club or that you're too mentally ill to the point where they shut you out. Your people will love you completely unconditionally. And the truth is, you just don't find that type of love very often on social media. There is currently 7.8 billion people in the world. Your people are out there waiting for you. So go find them. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I know today's video was a little bit more heavy, but I felt really passionate to talk about it. If you guys watched this video in its entirety, comment down duck emoji down below. If you guys would like to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at underscore Salem Tovar underscore. So go ahead and follow me there. I've been very open about my invisible illness journey and my PCOS and my weight loss. So if you're interested in any of that, go ahead and follow me. Sometimes I post on TikTok, sometimes I don't. If you want to follow me, follow me there anyways. It's at Salem Tovar. No one else has my name, thankfully. So obviously before I end all of my videos, I give you guys homework, which is to just make today count. If all I said was a little bit too much for you, take baby steps. Be merciful with yourself. If you do things according to your own pace, that's good enough. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.